involved in it, but to even advocate it to other people, especially you viewers who are in the youth sector, no? uh, you can really create uh, more of these innovation challenges uh, in your respective places. Next. So we have our partners. No? So JCI is a partner, NMYL. No? So a group of, uh, a group of counselors, governors, so everyone who's um, considered part of the youth sector, who's in government, so we're in, in partnership with them. Impact Hub Manila, one of the biggest... Um, um, co-working support spaces no, in the Philippines, GPPB, of course, and their team, um, World Economic Forum Global Shapers, okay, so they'll serve as mentors, U.S. Department of State, U.S. Embassy, so they're the ones who funded this uh, program, so shout out again to Edge Bautista, the, our uh, coordinator for YCLE in the Philippines, no? so hi, um, uh, thank you for uh, mentoring us or guiding us in this project, okay. Then our local government units, so we have chosen four initially, but we hope that whoever is viewing here, no, who's part of a national agency or is part of a local government, feel free to get in touch with us so that by 2021, 2022, even post-quarantine, no, let's do this. And then local universities okay, in the Philippines. So we want to be as well. Okay, so that's precisely what I procure is. No? So... So next, so let me not turn over. So now here's, we're going to be starting no? um, the discussion with our guest speaker. So introduce our guest. Let me now get back to Arnold. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, so moving forward, our guest speaker for our first webinar series is the executive director of the Government Board Technical Support Office. She graduated with a bachelor's degree in political science from De La Salle University, Manila, obtained her bachelor of laws degree from San Beda College of Law, Manila, and her master's of law in and development from the University of London, England. From 2009 to 2018, she headed the legal service of the Department of Budgeting. She's not just known for her expertise in government budgeting, but in government procurement as well, having, having worked on the Bids and Awards Committee on the Development of Philippine Properties in Japan and the DBM Bids and Awards Committee. In fact, she recommended to the DBM Secretary decisions on the appeals and protest actions filed against the DBM procurement service over the years. Aside from serving as a project procurement consultant of the Asian Development Bank, she is also a highly requested resource speaker and lecturer of, for various agencies, civil society organizations, and universities to discuss government procurement. Her extensive government exposure has led her to gain valuable insights and challenging experiences on the political, legal aspects of governance. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Attorney Rowena Candice Ruiz. So good afternoon, everyone. Everybody hearing all right? Yes, we can. Great. So magandang 
hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, before I start, I want to thank, of course, our collaborators from iProcure for having us in as the first of their webinar series. Of course, I want to welcome everybody who's uh, watching us from Zo uh, from the platform Zoom, as well as those who are watching and listening in from our Facebook live stream. Um, those were very interesting topics, especially in this time of pandemic. Um, we actually received an enormous and overwhelming amount of requests to be accommodated on our Zoom discussion. But don't worry because this will not be the first and definitely not be the last. So uh, there will be other webinar series of the GPPBTSO, not just on emergency procurement, but also on other aspects of procurement under 9184. So just watch out for all of, uh, for the future webinar. Uh, that will be often noted that uh, for those uh, who's not in Zoom, don't worry, you may be able to also drop in your comments and questions through slido.com. So go to slido.com and then um, enter as event code, hashtag government procurement PH for you to be able to drop in your questions and even comments. Now, let me begin. I think... Um, the very first question that might come to your mind is, what is this emergency procurement under the Bayanihan Act? Now, uh, the simple question that uh, I would, uh, the simple answer rather that I would give for this is that this is a special procurement mode in compliance with the passage of the Bayanihan Act, the President was authorized to undertake the procurement of identified good provisions of party and the different shades of Bayanihan procurement from rules. Bakit po? Because hindi po siya sakop ng provisions ng 9184. Okay. That's one of the basic difference po, with the existing emergency procurement that we have now under Section 53.D of RA 9184. Um, the authority uh, that would govern in the implementation of the Bayanihan procurement would be GPPB, um, the PSO, issued an opinion related to this. They should MP M number 004-2020 precisely to guide procuring entities in the conduct of emergency procurement under the Bayanihan Act, specifically summarizing the procedures and requirements as well as address possible issues and clarifications. Meron po kami doon mga frequently asked questions and answers uh, doon sa aming opinion na nilabas. Now, as I mentioned earlier, meron na po tayo, bago pa maipasa ang Bayanihan Act, meron na po tayong tinatawag na emergency procurement. Okay, or negotiated procurement under emergency cases under 9184. Maari yung tanungin, kailan ko pwedeng gamitin ng bayanihan procurement? Effective April 12, 2020, pwede na pong gamitin ng lahat ng procuring entities sa Pilipinas ang ating GPPB guidelines on bayanihan procurement. Okay? Now, the next question you might ask, Paano if I'm already undertaking emergency procurement under 9184? Pero gusto ko mi avail, you madi ko bang apply sa aking ongoing procurement under 9184 emergency cases, ang mga provision ng GPPB circular number one. The simple answer po dyan ay hindi. Bakit po? Hindi niyo po pwede ni apply midstream ang rules ng bayanihan procurement if you're already undertaking or conducting procurement under 9184 emergency cases. Bakit po? Uh, meron po tayo kasi mga penal provisions sa ating circular number one. Hindi po as a rule under the principle of prohibition ng ex post facto law, hindi po pwede yung bigyan ng retroactive effect. So ano po ang pwede nyo gawin doon? Kailangan nyo po na i-cancel ang existing procurement at mag-commence ng bago under the Bayanihan procurement rules. Okay. Now, the other question you might ask, Paano ko malalaman kung bayanihan procurement ang i-apply ko or ang exist 
existing negotiated procurement under emergency cases in 1924. Simply lamang po, ang kagandahan po ng bayanihan procurement, in-identify na po ang mga items covered by it. Ano po kung ibig sabihin nun? In general, items or services needed in order to mitigate, if not contain, the transmission of COVID-19 in the Philippines, which might include measures, so as not to overburden our healthcare system, pwede po yung isama. Okay? Um, pwede pong isama, uh, pwede pong um, maging parte or ma-include sa pagpo-procure niyo under the Bayanihan Procurement. But specifically, ano po yung mga items nito? Number one, Personal protective equipment. Kasama na po dyan ang mga medical supplies, medical equipment, um, some basic medicines, test kits, and the like. Right? What's important in this provision, sasabihin ninyo, med, pwede nyo uh, tanungin, paano kung wala dyan yung item? Pwede ba yun? Pwede ko ba siyang ma-procure? Meron po tayong actual sa provision na to. Ay, number one, sabi dito, such other supplies or equipment as may be determined by the Department of Health or other government agencies. So, ang kailangan lang kong gawin, mag-issue ang DOH or ang pang siya na isang circular or uh, guidelines nila na nagsasabi na ito yung mga items na pwede idagdag sa bayanihan procurement uh, dahil kinakailangan natin to para sa pag-address or pag-support ng COVID. So, that's number one. Number two, other social services and goods for social amelioration measures in favor of affected communities. Dito po papasok ang DSWD. Uh, dito po papasok ang DOLE. Number three, lease of real property and venue for use to house health workers or serve as temporary quarantine centers, medical relief and aid distribution locations or temporary medical facilities. So sa atin pong mga government hospitals as well as local government units, kung kinakailangan niyo po ng isang temporary area for distribution location ng mga medical reliefs and other aids, po pwede po tayong mag-list ng real property or venue. Next, um, for the construction service, establishment, construction, and operation of temporary medical facilities. Alam po natin that the result of uh, Memorial Stadium is now already a temporary um, quarantine facility. The DPWH is also uh, preparing uh, the World Trade Center, the uh, PICC, and the Philippine Arena for this purpose. Uh, next, kasama po dyan ng mga critical services na kinakailangan sa pag-ooperate ng mga quarantine centers, medical relief, and aid distribution centers, kagaya ng utilities, telecommunications, and other critical services. And finally, which I think is most important because a lot of people would say, uh, wala sa nabanggit mo earlier yung kailangan namin. Pa paano po pwedeng gamitin ng bayanihan procurement? Well, pag po, pwede siyang mag-fall under ancillary services related to the foregoing. Ano pong example nun? Balikan po natin yung ating establishment or construction of temporary medical facilities. Nabanggit ko po kanina that DPWH is doing this right now. Wala pong nakalagay dyan na construction supplies. Pero dahil maaari po na sa pag-transform uh, pag, pag po ng DPWH ng mga existing facilities para maging medical or quarantine facility, kinakailangan nyo pong bumili ng construction supplies, pwede pong pumasok dito sa ancillary services related to the foregoing yung paggamit ninyo ng bayanihan procurement rules. But now, let's see. What if talagang wala? At the end of the day, hindi po talaga natin makita or hindi natin makita na pwede siyang ancillary or related dun sa mga items na na-identify. Hindi ba ako pwedeng uh, magkaroon ng emergency procurement? Maaari pa rin po kayong mag-emergency procurement. But this time, kailangan niyo pong gamitin ang negotiated procurement emergency cases rules under sections 53.3 of 9184 and under the guidelines issued by the GTPD on the matter. So, ang importante lang po ay mag-qualify po kayo sa conditions for the use of negotiated procurement emergency cases. Ano-ano po ba yung mga conditions niyon? 
basically dalawa po siya. Alam po natin yung una, kapag uh, mayroong imminent danger to life or property during a state of calamity. Very, very important po yun. Pangalawa naman po is that when time is of the essence, okay, arising from man-made or natural calamities, or when immediate action is needed okay, from other causes in order to prevent damage or loss of life or property at the same time uh, to restore vital services, okay, public utilities or infrastructure uh, services. So yun po yung kailangan nating maalaala na dalawang kondisyon na po pwede nating gamitin ang negotiated procurement for emergency cases. Okay. Um, Bago po tayo pumunta dun sa procedure ng bayanihan procurement, uh, ano pa po kaya ang difference ng bayanihan procurement at negotiated procurement emergency cases under 9184? Bukod po dun sa unang nasabi ko, tatandaan niyo po that the provisions of bayanihan procurement under GPPB Circular Number 1 has a limited effectivity. Starting April 12th, until June 23, 2020 lamang po pwede siyang gamitin. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Kailangan po nakapag-issue na kayo ng Notice of Award by June 23, 2020. You might ask, why limited? Because the law by which this issuance was based, by Anihan Act, has a limited uh, effectivity period as well. So, kailangan po ang um, Kanya, ang effectivity ng Bayanihan Procurement ay pareho lamang or alongside the effectivity of the Bayanihan Act. The only caveat is unless the Act is sooner revoked, okay, earlier than the three-month period or extended by Act of Congress. Okay, so yun po. Now, having clarified all of those things, I'm sure you would like to know, paano ba natin simulan ang emergency procurement under the Bayanihan Act? Okay. I'm giving you here, uh, shown on your screen, a quick summary of how it is. A four-step process on how you actually do Bayanihan procurement. First, the most important, I have to say, would be for the preparation of project requirements. Okay? Dito po papasok yung ating pag-market study or market survey. Number two, certification of the availability of funds and updating of the APP. Number three, the direct negotiation itself. And finally, award of project. Next, let's go to the first step. A lot of people might say, kailangan pa ba namin mag-market survey, mag-market study bago kami magbayanin procurement? Kailangan po. Okay? While there's urgency, kailangan pa rin po yung gumawa ng market study or market survey. Bakit po? With more reasons, especially with this particular pandemic. Why? It disrupted supply value chain system ng buong mundo, hindi lamang po ng Pilipinas. So yun pong market study or yung kaalaman ninyo on what to procure and the amount last week, pwedeng mali na po yun ngayon kung ngayon kayo magpo-procure. So importante na magkaroon po kayo ng survey or market scanning para malaman. Number one, tama pa ba ang approved budget for the contract ko? Sapat pa ba ang budget ko para sa proyekto ko ito? And number two, most importantly, meron pa bang supply? Uh, in one of the interagency task force briefings that we've um, seen, the DTI secretary has said, we are now coordinating with manufacturing company. Why? They say we want them to transform uh, their manufacturing into the requirements for COVID, for the production of alcohol, for the production of masks, for the production of PPEs. Why? Because precisely, uh, ang hirap na kung makakuha ng supply. So, importante nating malaman bago pa tayo magsimula, meron ba tayong makakukuhanan? Baka wala. Baka yung limited nating area, baka wala doon. So, napaka-importante po that when we prepare our project requirements, we are mindful of those two important items. Right? So, of course, you need to include there your technical specification, the required quantity, and the data the date of delivery, and such other relevant information that you may require. Now, kung tapos na ako na mag-prepare ng project requirements, ano na yung kailangan kong gawin? Ano po ba usually ang ating iniisip after natin mag-prepare ng project requirements? We need to look at 
meron ba akong available budget? Especially po right now, because uh, there are agencies na wala akong naparang budget for this. Pero maari ho may dumating because of the Biennium Act as well. It allowed for augmentation of the budgets for COVID for some agencies. So maari pong uh, dati wala, maari ngayon meron po. And the next logical question would be, kailangan ko pa ba ng approved APP bago ako mag-procure under the Bayanihan procurement? As a rule, yes. Kailangan pa po siya. However, if time is of the essence, meron po tayong may mga ahensya tulad ng GOCC at SUC, their APPs were approved by the board of the directors. If time is of the essence at nakikita ninyo, baka hindi na kayanin pa na paaprobahan ng ating APP bago mag simula ng procurement, pwede nyo muna ho yung i-forgo. So again, as a rule, kailangan po natin ng approved APP, pero may exception. Maaari po tayo mag-commence ng procurement kahit walang approved APP, basta meron po kayong certification from the budget officer or equivalent position na meron hong budget available for your project. Okay, importante, importante ho yun. Very, very fundamental. Wala ho tayong ibabayad kung wala ho tayong budget for our procurement project. Okay? Now, so meron na akong project requirements. Alam ko na ilan bibilin ko. Alam ko na meron na akong supplier na pwede puntahan. Meron na akong budget. I can now directly negotiate with the supplier. Okay? But before I do, before you do that, let me just take note of the concept of delegation of authority and why it's very important in so far as procurement, uh, Bayanihan procurement is concerned. There are two types of delegations of authority that has been allowed under the Bayanihan procurement. Number one would be the authority, the authority of the Pope, okay, to approve the APP or to award the contract. Back it po, particularly for the LGU executives, they're all over the place. Uh, baka wala na ho silang oras para mag-approve pa ng APP or mag-award ng kontrata. Maaari po, i-allow po ni Hope na ma-delegate to, to another person. Okay? Uh, letter B, okay? uh, the authority to directly negotiate or conduct the procurement activities. Hindi ho kailangan back ang mag-direct negotiation. Yun po yung ibig sabihin ng pangalawa. Pwede ho by authority of the Hope, pwede niyong i-delegate sa isang tao, sa end user unit, sa isang bureau, ang authority na mag-procure. Bakit po? Maaari po kasi na hindi niyo makompleto ang back, ang mga back members ninyo during this emergency. So, kailangan meron po tayong alternative or another option by which magpa-function po yung procurement ng ahensya. Okay? We highly encourage for the hope to do the delegation of authority. Why? Because it will further streamline the process of procurement under the Bayanihan Act. Now, having said that, we now go to direct negotiation with the supplier. Sino bang supplier ko? We refer to the supplier, distributor, manufacturer, contractor, consultant, and even farmers associations or cooperatives. So, diretso na tayong pupunta. Kailangan ba siyang i-post sa field jobs? Hindi po. Kailangan ko bang mag-submit sa supplier ng request for quotation at kailangan niya bang mag-submit ng bid? Hindi po. Kailangan lang po dala niyo ang product requirements niyo na magiging basihan ng inyong negotiation. At pwede na kayong directly mag-negotiate sa isang supplier. Question. Kailangan ba physically makita ko sa supplier? No. Look at GPPB Resolution 24-2018. Pinayagan na po ng board a long time ago ang paggamit ng video conferencing, webcasting, similar to sa ating procurement activities. Kasama po dyan ang proseso ng direct negotiation under the Bayanihan Procurement or even under the Bayanihan Procurement. So, pwede ko. Pwede ko kayong uh, gumamit ng teknolohiya para makapag-usap at makapag-negotiate sa isang supplier. Okay? Now, going to a more delicate issue which brings to forth the importance of market survey. Tanong, Paano kung hindi kaya ng supplier na nakausap ko i-provide lahat ng pangangailangan ko? Pwede ba dalawa, tatlo, apat o lima pang supplier ang kontratahin ko para mag-deliver sa akin ng kailangan ko under the Bayanihan procurement? 
maaari po yung mangyari. Tandaan lang po natin na kinakailangan natin ng proper market scan to justify. Ano po sabihin ng market scan? Dapat ho, okay, tinignan nyo na, meron ba sa merkado na makapag-provide sa akin ng 1 million PPEs? Okay, yan po ang quantity na procure po ng procurement service for the DOH. Okay? Kung wala, nag-survey kayo, nagtanong kayo, wala naman po pala, maaari po kayong mag-procure from more than one supplier. Maaari nyo po i-categorize ang inyong project for Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, or whatever other category you would think of. At yun po ang i-implement ninyong procurement. Will this be considered splitting? No. It's very clear po in the GPPD circular. Kapag ka ho na, na comply nyo yung kondisyon, na nagtingin kayo sa merkado at walang isang supplier ang makapag-provide, maaari po kayong uh, kumuha sa is more than one supplier at hindi po yan i-consider na splitting of contracts. Right? Now, uh, paano naman ng price negotiation? Anong basihan ko for price negotiation? Tandaan po natin, okay, the principle of competition is still embedded in the Bayanihan Act because it requires that we get the most advantageous price available in the market. So, anong basihan natin? Maari po kung meron kayo existing price data or DTI kung meron. In this case, baka ho ang DOH or ang PS meron for some of the items procured for COVID. Pero hindi ho kayo kailangan mas stock doon. Maari niyong gamitin ang current or prevailing market prices. Because as I mentioned before, uh, nazira ho, na-disrupt ang ating um, supply and value chain system sa buong mundo. So, maaari hong very, very fluctuating ang prices. So, uh, tignan ho natin kung anong prevailing market price, price for this. Number three, for agricultural products, tignan naman, tignan naman po natin bukod ang market prices, tignan din po natin ang local price coordinate, ang retail price na sinet ng local price coordinating council. Alright? So, having explain ano yun ang importante yung malaman during price negotiations. Ready ka na ba to make a recommendation for award? Kung ikaw ang back or yung dinelegate ng hope to negotiate? Well, wait lang po. Tignan natin muna kung ang inyong supplier ay legally, technically, or financially capable. Ano yung sabihin nun? For legally, very simple po. Nag-comply ba siya sa documentary requirements or nag-commit siya mag-comply in the omnibus form statement? Technical. Ano ang technical? Yung nilagay niyo po sa project requirements. Ano ba yung specifications na nilagay niyo? More importantly, it's also possible that there can be license requirements. FDA certified pa siya and the like. Yan po ay kasama sa technical requirements na kailangan mong i-comply ng supplier. And finally, financial. With This is applicable. The next financial contracting capacity at applicable po siya for infrastructure projects. So if you have one, kailangan din po niyang mag-comply dyan. Once po nakakomply siya sa tatlong requirement na yon, pwede na po kayong mag-recommend ng award. Pero ano-ano nga ba yung mga documentary requirements na kinakailangan natin for bayanihan procurement? I have to say, it's similar to negotiated procurement emergency cases. May konting difference na ho it comes to submission and also particularly the omnibus form statement. For all procurements, kailangan ho ng mayor's permit. Kapag ka 500, more than 500,000 ng ABC, kailangan ho ng omnibus form statement at ng ITRN or business tax returns. Ano yung ibig ko sabihin OSS new provisions? Ang ibig lang kong sabihin yan, huwag niyo gamitin yung lumang OSS forms. Tingnan po ninyo yung Appendix 1 ng GPPB Circular Number 1 kasi nandun po yung mga bagong provisions na nakalagay sa ating omnibus, omnibus sworn, statement, uh, sworn statement. Yung po mga provisions na yun ay nagbibigay ng protection sa procuring entity. Bakit? Dahil po wala tayong bid security, wala po tayong performance security, at wala din tayong warranty security sa ating bayanihan procurement. Meron po mga commitments na nakalagay doon. Meron po mga possible penalties such as blacklisting. Andun din po yung commitment for the warranty provision. Uh, kaya ho importante na maibigay po yung OSS okay, for projects uh, more than 500,000. For infrastructure, kailangan mo ng pick-up license and of course 
uh, additional requirement for infra projects, 500,000 and above, kailangan po ng NFCC. Right. Um, tanong, paano kung meron, na, meron ka na existing supplier, engage mo lang siya uli at meron naman ng documents submitted sa Phil Jeffs. Kailangan nyo lang kung tignan kung updated. Hindi nyo kailangan ipa-resubmit ito. Maari din po na uh, hindi ho siya Phil Jeffs uh, platinum at uh, pero meron ho kayong sariling records ng updated documents ng supplier. Maari nyo hong gamitin yun. Huwag nyo ho kayong magpasubmit ng bago. Right? Now, uh, papaano ngayon sa submit ng bidders or ng suppliers ang kanyang um, documentary requirements? Kailangan ba niyang pumunta ng opisina? Hindi po. Pwede ho siyang pumunta kung kaya niya, pero pwede rin mo ito submit through electronic mail or fax. Kailan siya isasubmit? At any time before payment. Tandaan po natin yon. Pwede ho siyang mag-submit during negotiation, before award, after award, basta before payment. Okay? Except, the omnibus sworn statement kailangan po siyang masubmit at any time before the award of contract. Bakit? Kasi po, nandiyan po nakalagay ang commitments ng ating suppliers so kailangan po natin siyang ibigay before award of contract. Now, you might say, yung omnibus sworn statement ko, paano ko pipirmahan yun kung i-email ko lang sa'yo? Okay? Matagal na rin pong pinayagan ng JPPB in Resolution 16-2019, ang paggamit ng digital signature. Ano po yung digital signature? I provided you a sample here on the screen. All you have to do is go to the ict.gov.ph, register online. We are now doing the validation of the use of digital signature online. Mabilis lang po yan. It would take you about three days to about a week to complete everything. So you can already use your digital signature. Pwede pang other forms than digital signature, pwede po. Sabi po sa circular, digital signature or similar means in all procurement related documents. So, pwede po yun magamit. Okay. okay. Now, marami hong may quarantine, marami hong sarado, wala kayong makitang notaryo. O paano hong makapagsasubmit ng omnibus sworn statement ng supplier? The rules po allow that the OSS submitted may be unnotarized. The only requirement is you comply therewith after award of contract but before payment. Okay. What about mayor's permit? May mga LGUs pa hindi pa nakapag-issue ng kanilang mayor's permit. OR pa lang. Pwede ba yun? Pwede po. As long as uh, you have the OR as proof of application and payment for the renewal of the permit. Okay, subject as well to the submission of the mayor's permit after award of the contract. Okay, so meron pa ba tayo mga documentary requirements? I think I've already covered that. Once you have the documentary requirements, once you have determined the capacity of the supplier legally, technically, okay, immediately, ho, the award. Uh, pipirma ho kayo ng dokumento or the contrata and the contract your stipulated covering the procurement at hand, the goods or infrastructure projects will be delivered or implemented, shall be free from defects and conform to the quality standards and technical specification of the said contract. Wala po kasi tayong warranty security, kaya po kailangan ng dyan at the contract provisions. Meron bang reservation clause ang hope or delegate under Bayanihan procurement? Meron po. Okay. Kahit po ni-recommend ng award, if the hope to the benefit of the government relations. And finally, posting requirement for transparency and accountability, especially for the Bayanihan procurement because Congress required the government to submit regular reports on the activities and particularly the funds that have been used for, by, for, the, uh, for, uh, for, the, for the implementation of measures to contain or mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Now, then that...
Tan po natin earlier, pwede hong walang APP. That's why binibigyan po natin hanggang 30 September 2020 ang APP covering the Bayanihan procurement on their website. At don't forget this, on the GPPB online portal at gpppgovph.com. Tandaan, tandaan niyo po ulit. Happy September on the, G, on the GPP. Okay. What are the other things you need to post? The back to the secretary would have been on the online portal for emergency procurement. Okay. Ano po ba itong GPPB online portal for emergency procurement? Ginawa po ito ng GPPB TSO. Okay. Para ho, mas madali ho kayo makapag-post. Hindi po kasi tayo nakaka-post. Uh, kung hindi feel just right. We have provided this portal para nang sa ganun po mas mabilis ang pag-hook uh, na ba app. At the same time, apart from the portal being used for transparency on the procurements conducted under Bayanihan, we actually uh, allowed the suppliers, we added functionalities on the portal to allow suppliers to also post. There are already items posted for the portal, so check gppbgovph.com. Why is this important? Mas mabilis ho ang inyong market survey kasi it's there already. We have limited the suppliers to the items included in the Bayanihan Act. I've already checked it before and there's already items posted. We can actually use it. Now, kayo ho ba? Hindi kayo supplier, hindi kayo procuring entity. Pwede ba kayo tumingin sa portal? Pwede, pwede ho. No need for any registration. Just go to GP GPBGovph. Oh, oh, makikita niyo po ano yung mga items na pinos ng supplier at the same time ng mga procuring entities. Right. Now, that's the end of the biomedical that we have included under the guidelines. Number one, direct purchase. Uh, from local farmers. What does it mean? And you might have meron pong mga covered by the Bayanihan procurement. Pwede niyo bilhin yun. Okay? For relief from our local farmers diretso. Marami ho tayong local farmers na affected by the distress. We buy from them directly. Paano po natin malalaman na local farmers sila? Humingi po tayo ng any of the three. Meron ba siyang certification? na isa, isang farmer under the RSBSA. This is under the Department of Agriculture. Kung wala pa ho siyang certification, baka meron na ho siyang ID. Tingnan ho natin siya ng RSBSA ID. Or kung wala pa rin po, humingi lang po tayo sa certification uh, from the barangay that the supplier is actually a bonded farmer. That's all that you will require for you to actually directly negotiate with the local. Uh, you are guided by the, uh, the two uh, price uh, standards okay, in negotiating for the prices. The average prevailing farm gate price for the province or the recommended retail price by the local price coordinating council, either in the province, municipality, or city. Now, ano naman ang dokumento na napapakita na bumili ako sa farmer, sa isang local farmer? Yung congressman voucher na yun, gagamitin po ng procuring entity, papapirmahan niya po yan sa farmer. This has to be signed by the farmer uh, and that will serve as a delivery invoice. Okay? And it will also evidence actual delivery and receipt of payment. Okay? So that's all for direct uh, purchase or negotiation with the local farmer. Next question niyo, may repeat order ba sa Bayanihan Procurement? Meron po. We call it a special repeat order. Ano yung kailangan kong gawin? Again, this is where market survey comes very, very, uh, uh, it's, it's very, very important. Or its importance is highlighted. Because number one yung tatanungin is uh, kung pwede ka bang mag-reorder. Okay, ano yung mga, one of the conditions bago ka mag-reorder? 
uh, kailangan makita mo ano ba yung mga available in the market. Baka yun kasing dati mong kontrata, mas mahal na siya. Kasi first, of course, to determine, kailangan mong mag-reorder. Meron akong kontrata dati, okay? Um, yung no one niya na issue within six months at kailangan ko mag-reorder. Number one, tinignan ko sa merkado, okay, wala namang mas mababang presyo. Pag na-confirm ko yun, pwede na ako mag-direct negotiation with a supplier. Kailangan mo lang gawin since that, pwede ka na mag-issue ng notice of award, ilalagay mo lang sa notice of award that this is for a special repeat order. Okay? Important rule, bawal ho ang advance payment kapag a special repeat order. Now, to be sure, let me lay down to you the conditions for a special repeat order. Limited po siya sa goods. Goods lang po. Hindi pwedeng infra, hindi pwedeng consultancy. That's number one. Number two, kailangan po, or related to number one, goods covered by the Bayanihan Act. Okay? Number two, yung goods po nabili under a contract previously awarded through any mode of procurement. Any mode of procurement, very important. Hindi kailangan public bidding. Pwede hong small value, provided that the NOAA was issued within the last six months. Okay? Number three, unit prices must be safe. lower than those in the original contract. Okay. If it's available in the market, shown in acceptance, then finally, the original contract. Okay, So, yan po ang rules for condition for a special order. And finally, I want to discuss to you advance payment. So, okay, anong percentage ng advance payment? Tinaas na po yan ng ating presidente upon the recommendation of the GPT. Look for OP Memorandum Order Number 48. I think it's dated April 20, 2021. Nalaw po niya ang advance payment na to exceed 30% the contract amount basta items covered ng Bayanihan Act. If you're doing negotiated procurement emergency cases, ang allowable niyo lang po advance payment ay 15%. Okay, what about lease of venue real property? Diba ako mag-advance payment? Pwede po, a single advance payment not to exceed 50% of the contract uh, shall be allowed. Okay? Basta the requirement of down payment is a standard industry practice. You might ask, para saan ba itong mga lease of venue property? Remember, we allow for temporary housing of health workers, medical relief and aid distribution locations and the like. Right? Uh, tandaan po din natin na nakalagay din po sa OP Memorandum Order No. 48 na kailangan po ma-release ng procuring entity ang advance payment within three working days from the order of the contract. Bakit po, again, or under an emergency, we want to be able to further facilitate the process. Right? That's the end of our discussion for emergency procurement. Uh, I want to also flag that we are, we are now um, on Facebook YouTube and Twitter. So you can find GPPBTSO uh, through looking for the age on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Gagamitin po namin ang tatong social media accounts na yan to inform me of future webinars. Also, to post issuances, opinions, FAQs, and the like. Right. So, thank you so much. I think we're going to have a short break and then we'll go on to the open forum. Oh. Okay, so thank you very much, Attorney Rowena Ruiz. No, so very uh, detailed no discussion. No, uh, specifically on the processes that we need to um, understand. No, especially at this time. No, when we want to procure for goods, especially not just goods, but for our personal protective equipment. No, so we can we can say na right now. No, if you are the viewer who's uh, specifically, uh, of course, local planning. You're also concerned of, uh, you are an executive perhaps, no? Na you want to procure um, PPEs for your constituents, no? So this is going to be very helpful for you, um, especially 
ngayon, masabi ng the institutions tayo. Kasi it's hard for, for us to really, um, to, of course, to go from one point to another. No? Kung maga ngayon, very important ang coordination. So thank you, Attorney no, Rowena, for really providing this um, system no? na hindi lang po tayo... Um, Kumaga, yung manual process natin talagang na-translate po natin into uh, given, of course, the new normal, no? All the more, we have to really migrate to digital. So, thank you again for the very thorough and very um, uh, situation-centered yeah, discussion. Yun. So, we will... Have a two-minute break. So for those who are listening now, no? So, uh, pa tayong one minute. Okay. Um, we are, again, again no? uh, thankful no, for the participation of, uh, um, of course, it's, this program will not be possible without, of course, the Government Procurement Policy Board um, technical support no? office no? for really assisting us in this. No? So very important ang involvement nila dito kasi yun nga, it's not just the uh, yun nga, we need to really um, assess no which are which amongst the vast literature of procurement is necessary to be communicated no to all of us here no at the same time no, for the US embassy no for all the for the support so this just started as a coffee discussion no just like any other um, um, initiative no so we started with that and then eventually it has grown into a project like this. So we are adapting to the new normal. Okay. Sige. So perhaps, no? Okay. So yeah. So welcome once again. Okay. So really, no? Lots of uh, great points, no? Um, that we're getting from attorney, no? Uh, and uh, when you talk about those points, no? It's really part of... Uh, number one is it's really important for us to really know Okay, um, really be prepared no, with the document, documents that we have, no? And really be uh, uh, knowing, no, yung process that was presented earlier. Kasi yun nga, eh, um, in the end of the day, we don't want to always uh, be checking every now and uh, look for, uh, apply for bids, no? Kaso yun nga, parang kulang uh, tayo ng pag hindi maayos yung pagtingin natin sa proseso kulang pa ang ating documents di ba so very important talaga na makita natin siya holistically yon so procurement is very important no again no? yung sa, parang uh, uh, other than the process procurement is important in yun nga eh, making uh, the, in in the, in um obtaining no through the process Anyway, so since we're starting, ayan, so meron lang akong konting guidelines, no? So si Arnold, ayan, nagbabalik. <laughs> okay, so he will be co-facilitating this open forum. So during the open forum, the host will call out the in-Zoom participant's name. Okay, so meron po yung mga nasa Zoom, no? Meron po kayong mga pinost na questions dyan. So GP. GPTB is uh, looking at your questions and then once na tinawag po mga pangalan nyo, no? Uh, uh, feel free speaker with his or her audio and video. So please do turn your audio and video kapag tinawag po ang pangalan nyo to ask that question. Um, you should be ready. So be ready. Our uh, 56 no? online uh, Zoom um, participants. And uh, for those who are uh, in FB Live, no? Please do access the Slido and then of course, no, nandu, please type in your question. So kung meron man pong question na hindi po masagot, um, yun, sasagutin din po yan <laughs> ng ating uh, um, technical support office, no? So, and uh, the second guideline here is 
Okay, so reminders for the question to be asked. Only questions about emergency procurement. Okay, so wag po tayo magtatanong about social amelioration, about uh, matters pertaining to um, leadership. No, siguro eh, na how is it related to good governance? Pwede yon, no. Pero important talaga na we stick with this, no. Emergency procurement under the Bayanihan Act, no. So, we'll be firstly entertained in the open forum on Zoom. However, in case the participants, viewers have comments or additional concerns on the Bayanihan Act or other questions beyond the presentation after the webinar, they can input these in Slido with event code hashtag government procurement PH, okay? So, to which our office will answer through an issuance or FAQs. So, again, no, for the Zoom participants, tatawagin po kayo, you will speak. Here in this open forum, then for the Slido, um, we will consider consider your questions later or for further. So I think Malino naman yung ating dialogue. Okay, so. Uh, let's now start, no? Um, where shall we? This. Uh, uh, okay. Sean. Sean? Uh, are you there, Pope, ma'am? Uh, okay, nasagot na raw. Pero ito po yung question niya. Are we expecting the GPPB to release alternate list of procurement documents in lieu of physical documents to proceed with the procurement? Pero according to her, nasagot na raw. Just allow me to reiterate, no? just in case hindi po naabutan ng iba. Uh, first of all, uh, the PowerPoint presentations will be uploaded on our website, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and Twitter accounts. Okay? So don't worry. Um, I think for those who registered with, uh, with iProcure through Zoom, you'll get a copy of the presentation. For those listening on Facebook, you can get a copy uh, by... Um, downloading it to our website and also Facebook and then Twitter. For the question, meron bang alternative forms? Lahat po ng mga forms na kinailangang baguhin nandun na po sa circular. The project requirements, the details are there. The revised omnibus warrant statement, nakalagay din po doon na maaari kayong mag-submit in printed or through email or fax. Okay, so uh, Claro po yun, hindi yung kailangan ng physical presence, even the negotiation that can be done through video conferencing. All right, next question. Next question po, from Mr. John Mark Duet Duetes. Ito po yung sabi niya, is there any guidelines or mechanism provided by GPPB in conducting market scanning slash survey? Uh, the guidance for market scanning is wherever you can see it or, or check our generic procurement manual for goods in friend consulting services. But essentially, ang kailangan lang niyo po kasing pakita, okay, in doing the market survey is that identify niyo ano yung mga specifications na kailangan niyo, kung may available supplier at kung magkano. At the same time, as I mentioned earlier, maari niyo po i-access ang ating GPTV online portal gppbgovph.com. Meron na po tayong mga suppliers na nag-post sa mga items na available po sa kanila at kung mag, uh, magkano ito. At the same time, I'd like to take the opportunity to also note that you can also buy uh, a lot of the COVID supplies from the procurement service. Why? Because one of the things that the GPPB uh, approved okay, at the start of the ECQ, even before the ECQ, was to include some items. Uh, I cannot just recall all of them, uh, but test kits are included, uh, PPEs are included, masks are included, as common supply items where you can actually directly buy from the procurement service, including alcohol and some of those supplies. So do check the website of the procurement service as well. Okay, po, thanks. Um, another question po from Zoom, from Mr. Emmanuel Sakai, sabi niya, how much if there is a recommended slash maximum amount allowed to be procured in emergency procurement? And how much per item if there, if there are limits? Uh, 
uh, for that question, wala akong limit na binibigay ang bayanihan procurement sa ano yung pwede mong bilhin under the rules. Uh, ang magiging difference lang po would be the documentary requirements. If it's more than 500,000, may additional. But otherwise, wala po tayong threshold. Okay po. Another question from Zoom, um, from Miss Maria Estela Nacion. Sabi niya, re new normal, are NGAs allowed to use capital outlay funds to be spent to IT equipment and infrastructure to beef up work from home setup as COVID-19 measure? Okay. The first part of the question is a budgeting concern. Are we allowed to use capital outlays for IT? I would have to defer to DBM. Hindi ko kasi ako taga DBM. Meaning you have to uh, ask your DBM representative if you're an agency, pwede ka bang mag, uh, pwede, ba kang, pwede ka bang mag-modify from capital outlays to IT equipment kung ano po yung gusto nyong bilhin. Assuming po, payagan kayo ng um, DBM or allowed po siya under the rules ng DBM, tatandaan nyo lang po whatever IT equipment ang bibili nyo or whatever equipment you'd like to buy or whatever supplies, kasama ba siya yung sa enumeration na nabanggit ko? Look at item 2.2 of GPPB Circular number 1. Kung hindi siya kasama specifically enumerated, dinagdag pa siya ng DOH or other agencies as among the items sa pwedeng bilhin under the Bayanihan Act. Or kung hindi pa rin siya kasama doon, uh, ancillary ba siya? Doon sa mga services mentioned above. Ano yung mga ancillary? Katulad ng example po, construction supplies. Kung ikaw ay uh, for the DPWH, for you to be able to um, transform existing facilities into quarantine sites or centers. Kahit hindi po naka-identify doon ng construction supply. Now, ang importante po nating malaman, uh, sino ba ang magdedetermine kung covered ako ng bayanihan procurement kung item ko? Ang procuring entity po ang makakaalam kung covered po ba yung project nyo or hindi. Bakit? Kayo po ang pinaka nakakaalam ng mandato ninyo. Lahat po ng binibili natin sa gobyerno, kailangan naka-relate sa ating mandato. At kayo rin po ang makakaalam ano yung mga projects na kailangan ninyong implement para magampan ninyo yung mandato ninyo. Okay? At dahil kayo po ang gumawa ng project, kayo po ang nakaka-identify ng mga details ng your project requirements para malaman ninyo related ba to or ancillary ba to sa pag-respond natin sa COVID. Okay? Next question. Next question po. Um, from Mr. Sandro Noguera and Mr. Robinson Luzon, medyo similar po yung questions nila. Um, ito po yung sabi nila. Can a government agency, which is not a frontliner, allowed to purchase items for donation to our frontliners? Tapos yung second question, can we procure PPEs or goods to be donated to our LGU or other medical services? Right. Ang po yung tanong. I think, well, there are two questions. Essentially, the question is, ako, government agency, maaari ba akong bumili ng items no? under the Bayanian or perhaps any items na gusto mo later on i-donate? Okay, to medical frontliners or to LGUs? Yes. My answer is this. This is not actually a procurement question, but I will answer this. Kasi maganda po yung tanong niya. Number one, tanongin niyo po yung sarili ninyo. Nasa mandato niyo po ba ang mag-donate? Okay? If you're a GOCC, if you're an SUC, look at your charter, look at your special law. Are you allowed through the authority of your board of directors to actually make donations? For most government agencies po, you have to look at your mandate or, or your law. If you don't have a special law, look at the admin code. Inaalaw po ba kayo na mag-donate? Yun po ang makakasagot. Okay? Kung pwede kayong mag-donate. Okay? Uh, on the other hand, pwede naman hindi po siya in the form of donation. Eh. In the form of you buying the items yourselves okay? as, part of your, as a part of your performance of your function. Itignan niyo po, again, ang inyong mandato. Pwede ba akong bumili ng PPE kung ako ang DILG PNP para gamitin ang mga polis? Nasa mandato ba ng polis ang uh, mag... Uh, ano ba yung role na no, to maintain order? And of course, to po ensure health ng, ng ating mga kapulisan, maaari po kayong bumili ng uh, mask. So in those scenarios, po, yun po, 
different scenarios sa pinrovide ko para makompare niyo hands on your legal basis. Meron ba kayo sa mandato ninyo na authorized kayo mag-donate? On the other hand, pwede ba akong bumili ng item uh, ng PPE for instance or ng mask? Bibigay ko sa, if I'm DILG PNP, sa uh, empleyado ko sa populisan para maprotektahan sila. In that aspect, dahil kasama ko sa role ng PNP, DIL, DILG PNP, Um, as part of the COVID yan sa mandatin mo. So, bottom line, tignan po natin, authorized ba tayo and undertake this approval? Okay po. So from from slide, so can subscription to Zoom Premium be considered under Emergency Procurement under Bayanihan Act? Okay. I will have to revert back to the list. Okay. Mm -hmm. Again, babalik tayo sa ancillary. Ano ka bang ahensya? Let's say you are the agency uh, that manages, uh, uh, um, for instance, the interagency task force. Okay. You ask yourself. Related ba yung pagbili ko ng Zoom sa mga activities ng interagency task force on COVID? Your answer to that question is yes, po pwede. So, ibig sabihin, you go back to our mandate. Okay? Ano ba yung role ko? Uh, yung ahensya ko? Okay? Yung mandato ng ahensya ko number one. Ano yung role ng ahensya ko sa pag sa pag mitigate or so I made the uh, uh, example the interagency task force para mas madaling yung marili. Okay po. So, another question from Slido. Um, sabi po dito, will Bayanihan procurement apply to foreign offices or Very foreign service posts po. of the yes, government? Yes, because our consular offices is actually an extension of the Philippine jurisdiction. So our laws, Philippine laws, apply within the confines of our embassies abroad, our consular offices abroad. So kaya ho lagi kong sinasabi, if you, have, uh, if you have not been to the U.S., you go to the U.S. Embassy, if you're able to go inside, you're practically within U.S. jurisdiction. Kasi po, yan po yung international law natin. No? So ang jurisdiction po ng ating consular embassies, Uh, at ang um, mga foreign posts abroad is Philippine jurisdiction. So, mag-a-apply po ang ating bayan ng okay procurement. Um, bids and awards committee. Sabi po dito, while we appreciate relaxation of document requirements under emergency procurement, we believe that normal document requirements continue during lockdown. How about document requirements under PB slash AMP? Okay, the question is, uh, other than emergency procurement, is that the question? Uh, what about the documentary requirements under? Um, right now, uh, I understand the concern. Now, right now, I would hesitate to answer because I cannot, and I cannot preempt them. But what I can say is I rest assured that the GPPB is doing everything it can to actually make procurement easier, not only under Bayanihan procurement, but also for public bidding and other modalities during the state of calamity. We're not only talking about during the ECQ because it will be lifted uh, personal schedule by May 15. But during the state of the calamity that the president um, declared earlier, for about six months, if I'm not mistaken, the board has already So, katulad ho ng mga other uh, uh, resolutions na in-approve ng board, kinailangan ho namin, number one, uh, make sure that it would apply to all. We also need to get the feedback of some of our stakeholders. Uh, so, wag ko kayo magalala. Hindi ko lang ho pwede pang sabihin ngayon dahil wala pa hong approval ng board. But soon enough, we will be able to uh, just watch out for these rules on our website.
website and our social media accounts para ko uh, mas mag-guide kayo for the conduct of public bidding and other modalities under 9184. I'm sure excited kayo dahil malapit na malift ang ECQ. Another question. How about procurement function of work for us? That's earlier mentioned. Uh, again, PPE itself is covered by the Bayanian procurement. I think the underlying question is, can agencies buy PPEs for their own employees? If you understood the uh, question correctly. So again, PPEs uh, within the period of the applicability of the Bayanian procurement until June, June 23, 2020 is covered or included under the items that may be procured under the Bayanian procurement. As to whether or not your agency can procure them for the employees, that is really the call of the agency. I cannot answer for the mandate of the agency at saka yung accountability po kasi nasa ahensya. So with that, as I mentioned earlier, the determination is always on the procuring entity. On what to buy, when to buy, how, when to buy, how much to buy, when to deliver, etc. Yes, ma'am. Uh, may another interesting question po ulit dito. Does, does COA or banks honor documents signed with digital uh, signature? Does COA or? Does COA or banks, banks, Honor, honor documents signed with digi digital signature? I cannot uh, answer for banks because it has nothing to do with procurement. I think that is something we have to uh, address the matter before the BSP, I suppose, or the banks themselves. But for the COA, uh, I, I will not tell, uh, I cannot tell you what, uh, what are the rules of the COA on the matter. What I can tell you is uh, under the rules, use of digital signature has been allowed okay and often uh, if you look at how COA audits they audit on compliance with rules so that following that line of thought therefore if the use of digital signature is allowed therefore you are complying with the rules so i don't see any uh, difficulty or issue that may arise plus one thing also i would like to emphasize when the digital signature. We did it in collaboration with the DICT and uh, that should give you sufficient confidence mm -hmm. in using the digital signature. Okay. One thing also perhaps that uh, others might have some qualms about using digital signature. Meron po kasing security feature ang digital signature. Kaya we encourage registration before the DICT. Magamit po kasi siya ng public key infrastructure. Okay? Para ho lang mabilis na ma-explain yung security feature niya. Let me say this. Uh, pagka ho, you, you saw earlier in the presentation whether the, uh, how the digital signature would look like. Kapag ka ho nilagay ninyo or inauthorize ninyo yung paglalagay because it's a, it's a software that you will up, upload in your uh, computer. The moment po na baguhin ang kahit na anong uh, letra or punctuation, kahit isang kama lang po natanggalin dun sa document na napirmahan nyo na, mawawala po yung signature ninyo. Okay. That's one security feature the digital That's why we highly encourage that you go to the ICT.gov. He did it in a pomagami. The documents be done on uh, GCS. Yung pong payment, I will have, uh, since hindi po namin sakop, hindi po sakop ng GPTB ang payment mechanism. So meaning po, govern po siya ng DBM and um, POA, hindi po namin siya uh, uh, makokontrol. In fact, uh, when we did the Bayanian procurement code, but this is evidently not within the jurisdiction of the board, so hindi po namin kayang gawin. What we did was instead 
puwa. For ovulation, baka pwede rin hong maglabas yung puwa ng rules, no? Remember, even before the Bayanian Act, right after the Bayanian Act, there's a joint memorandum circular signed by GPPB Chair Wede uh, Atado and the POA Chair himself okay, endorsing emergency rules okay, for the procurement during the uh, state of calamity. Uh, part of that collaboration is that we are now recommending certain um, rules that COA may consider because COA is an independent uh, constitutional office. We cannot, uh, 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 we can only we recommend to them patients na ginawa ng GPTV and DSO when we're doing the binary procurements. Okay po. Um, another question. If the price of the available COVID item at the PSDBM is higher than other suppliers, can government agencies procure from these suppliers at a lower cost? So, ang um, sinasabi niyo po ay isang common new supply item. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if if the basis of the question is that you want to buy a common use supply item because under the rules po, pagka common use supply item po, kailangan po siyang manggaling sa procurement service or bibili nyo na lamang po sa procurement service. Kaya po, dahil yan po ang ating uh, rule, kina ang suggestion ko po ay pumunta po kayo sa procurement service dahil under the rules, kailangan nyo po humingi na um, sinas para ho kayo makapag-procure on your own, citing po yung sinabi ninyo na mas mababa kasi yung nakuha ninyong uh, item. The other thing po na kailangan po natin i-emphasize, i-compare ninyo ho yung technical specification. Okay? Very, very important. Baka ho nag- compare kayo ng apple and oranges. Meaning, sabi ninyo, nakita ninyo yung items sa PS, eh, hindi lang, importante ko makompare ninyo yung price na mas mababa yung price ng supplier na nakuha ninyo kasi baka magkaiba naman po yung detalye or specifications. But in any case, assuming po talagang parehong-pareho, but you will be able to show that you can get a, uh, a lower price. Humingi po kayo nung sinas kasi po yun yung requirement. Baka ho kasi hanapan kayo ng koa ninyo. Okay, again, the assumptions are it's a common use supply because for common use supply items, kailangan bilhin sa PS. Kung hindi po siya common use supply, never mind. You can actually procure on your own. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to secure anything. Okay, second check po ang specifications. Baka ho, we're talking apples and oranges. Okay, para ho, uh, klaro ho sa atin na yung specification, yung dalawang bagay na pinakumpare nyo, pareho din po ang specifications. Okay po. Um, actually, we're done. Um, no more questions. Na, na, nasagot na po lahat ng questions. But, uh, then again, if meron pa pong questions yung public, um, you, can, you can always go to the Slido event of JPPB. Um, just key in the code hashtag government procurement PH. So, yeah, I think we're good with the Q&A portion. Okay, yeah. And so again, no, thank you very much uh, for uh, attorney, no. So uh, for uh, uh, entertaining talaga no, all these questions, especially no na yun nga, right now I was just looking at my Facebook no. Talagang everyone is really asking um, this question na uh, yun nga, I mean uh, what will, how will these goods be uh, let's say transferred to their office? Kumaga more on that fundamental question, the other question is yun nga, uh, talking about how do we obtain no, um, this request that we have. No? So talagang ano, it's been streamlined. Uh, so it's really, uh, this webinar really, GPPB has already done moves, uh, a move, a concrete move to streamline the procurement process for the ease of uh, obtaining the necessary goods. So before we proceed, no, dun sa ating closing, no. Before I just end, yeah? let me just again, uh, you may uh, get a copy of the presentation earlier on the website, Twitter, and Facebook. If you still have questions, especially non-emergency procurement related questions, drop them at slido.com. Uh, event code hashtag government procurement ph. Do not hesitate 
we may not be able to answer you directly, but we will try to do so through our issuances. Expect uh, a number of infographics being posted on our Facebook, Twitter, uh, the video for this, so we will, we hope to post as well on our YouTube account. And there will be more webinars to come as well. Uh, let me take also advantage of this opportunity to ask the procuring entities uh, for their support. Uh, so what we're doing right now is after this, by next week, we'll be having our webinars for local government units in collaboration with the local government academy. Thereafter, uh, what we plan to do would be, we, if you would like, you may want to invite us. We'll have an exclusive webinar discussion. We'll also be doing, again, open to the public webinars on procurement, not just emergency, but the other aspects of procurement. That would be the new normal, I have to say, for GPPB and TS. So when it comes to capacity development of activities for the office. So take advantage now um, if you would like to have an exclusive webinar session for your community. Para ho, sabay sabay ho natin ma discuss for agency concern. All right. So again, thank you very much. I'd like to thank again I Procure and everybody who watched and tuned in for our presentation this afternoon. Maraming maraming thank you, Paul. John, so thank you very much again, Attorney. No? So in behalf of uh, um, the YCL Alumni Network and also the U.S. Department of State, no? so we thank you as well for um, taking this role no? to become our initial speaker for our series of webinars. Na yun nga, I uh, uh, goal eventually, no, since we're talking about the new normal, uh, we are, you know, the plan of viewer solutions with you, you know, through our, our you know, hackathons. So, kung meron man kami propose, no, maybe we can work together more. Yon. So, thank you very much again, attorney. No, so thank you. Yes. Okay. So, again, no, so this has been uh, uh, the iProcure team. So, si Arnold talagang. <laughs> talagang ano no parang napalaban sa dami ng mga ano no questions talaga na tinanong ng ating very active audience no so again no um, for in our end for i procure no please watch out for our next webinar we're going to be talking about um uh, more into the side of leadership so yung kemam no local government academy no more detailed procurement no? um for us, no, um, in a way, ganun din, but we're going to be focused on the best practices. Na. Yun. Pero syempre, we'll still be inviting GPPB. In our, uh, and for our hackathons, no, watch out okay, for a uh, like ng page no, ng both GPPB at ng uh, initiatives for procurement um, innovations. Okay, so please do so. Um, and we will be releasing content, okay? Content na related sa topic na to. And please do share it. Like and, well, hindi naman subscribe, but yeah, just, just like and share. Okay, so again, thank you very much and hope you have all a great day. Okay, so bye-bye. So be updated. Follow on social yep. media. GPPB. Okay. So, Government Procurement PH, then YouTube at Government Procurement uh, um, respective LGUs, offices, and communities, and even sa mga kabataan, no? then Government Procurement PH at Twitter. Okay. So, we'll be helping, G we'll be working with GPPB in, when, with the youth engagement part. Yun. So, we're really uh, hoping na we can start our hackathon runs very soon. Okay, so be ending seminars and FGDs. Okay. So again, thank you, no, for our uh, panel, you know. So, sige, bago tayo magtapos, no, gusto ko lang banggitin si uh, Miss Gina Ruiz, the executive assistant. Okay, no, so she's here, no, answering all your questions. Randy Flores, the information management division. Uh, Secretary. Target division, uh, si Ms. Diane and our 
capacity development division who guided the steps no, that brought us all here. Johan. So thank you very much for the GPPB Technical Support Office team. Okay, so there. So we're done. Okay, so 500 attend, 700 attendees po tayo kanina. No? Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagtangkilip. Okay. So thank you very much. And hope continue and stay safe, wash your hands, and keep in touch. Uh, all right. Malaking, bakit ilinig kayo yan? Hindi mga rin ang dun sa kayo yan. Hindi ko na nagkano ako tamanig.